Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at single phase full wave control rectifier with RL load and freewheeling diode. So let's get started. This is the circuit diagram. In order to understand the operation of the circuit, let us consider the waveforms. We are going to consider a sinusoidal voltage source. We will be applying suitable amount of gate pulse and we are going to look at the output voltage waveform, the output current waveform, and the voltage across thyristor T1 and T2 respectively. Now, let us say we will be applying a gate pulse as alpha at the positive half cycle. So the firing angle alpha is applied at this instant. So what happens to the operation of the circuit? So this is the circuit diagram. The supply voltage will go positive and negative in this particular fashion and the thyristor T1 will be forward biased because positive is connected to the anode and thyristor T2 will be forward biased because negative is connected to cathode. As a result, this is also forward biased and acts as short circuit, whereas T3 and T4 will be acting as open circuit. The voltage across the freewheeling diode will actually be reverse biased because if you carefully observe, plus is appearing at the cathode of the freewheeling diode and minus is appearing across the anode of the freewheeling diode. As a result, even the freewheeling diode acts as open circuit. Now the current starts flowing through this path. It flows through this path. It flows through the load in this direction. So the inductor starts charging with the polarity plus and minus and it flows back through T2 and it comes back to the source in this particular fashion. So what will be the output voltage in this case? The output voltage will be equal to Vs because there is no power consuming elements. So T1 and T2 is acting as short and whatever we are supplying will be appearing at the load terminals. As a result, we will be having V out is equal to Vs. So what is the output voltage waveform? It will start at zero because initially T1, T2, T3, T4, all of them are not fired and they are not given a gate pulse. As a result, it is the output voltage will be equal to zero because we do not have any voltage at the load, isn't it? So that is why it is starting at zero. Now when we are triggering at alpha, T1 and T2 is turned on, isn't it? And we know that V out will be equal to Vs. As a result, it will start following the supply voltage waveform, which is shown over here. So it exactly resembles the supply voltage from the instant where the firing angle is applied. So this firing is because of T1 and T2. Now what happens to the output current waveform? I will be explaining why there is a slope over here, but let us consider at this instant what happens when alpha firing angle is given. So when that is applied at this instant, the current starts increasing slowly as the current is flowing through the load and the inductor is char charging, the current increases slowly because of the charging taking place in the inductor. I hope this point is clear. Now, what happens during negative half cycle of the supply voltage? When the supply voltage is going negative, that is Vs is minus and plus, T1 and T2 will be reversed past, isn't it? So because of T1 and T2 going to reverse past condition, one more point that will take place is the inductor that was previously having plus and minus as the polarity, it will change its direction that is minus and plus according to the property of Lenz law. It does not allow sudden change in current. So this plus is connected to anode of freewheeling diode and minus is connected to the cathode of freewheeling diode. As a result, freewheeling diode is acting as a short circuit and the current flows through the load through this direction, through this direction and through this direction. So what will be the output voltage in this case? The output voltage will be equal to zero when the freewheeling diode is conducting because it is acting as a short circuit, isn't it? As a result, we have V out is equal to zero. But if you carefully observe, the I out is still flowing in the same direction as it was previously flowing. So what happens to the waveform? The waveform output voltage is equal to zero when the freewheeling diode is conducting. So this is the region where the freewheeling diode is conducting. And what happens to the output current waveform? the output current will start decreasing, isn't it? It will start decreasing. The reason is because the energy stored in the inductor is getting dissipated to the resistor. As a result, it is starting to decrease in this particular fashion. And that is why I had shown that the current is initially decreasing at this instant. I hope this point is clear.
So here we will have the freewheeling action taking place. Now when we are applying a gate pulse for T3 and T4, what happens is that T3 and T4 will be forward biased and acts as short circuit and again the current starts flowing through this direction and the inductor starts charging with the polarity in the opposite direction that is plus and minus. Again the voltage V out in that case will be equal to Vs because in this case T3 and T4 is conducting, isn't it? And T1 and T2 will act as open circuit. So the voltage waveform will be similar to what we had got with respect to T1. So V out will be equal to Vs, isn't it? So you will be getting similar shape to what we have received or what we have got in the first case. So that is because of T3 and T4. The current again starts increasing as the inductor slowly starts charging with a polarity plus and minus. Again, in the next cycle, when the supply voltage goes positive, again freewheeling action takes place as the inductor does not allow sudden change in current and the cycle repeats in this particular fashion. So freewheeling action takes place at this instant and the output voltage goes to zero when the freewheeling diode is conducting. Now what happens to the voltage across thyristor 1 and thyristor 2? So I will explain the nature of the sharp waveform that is at this point. To understand that let us consider the complete cycle. So the voltage across thyristor T1 and T2 will become equal to zero when they are conducting, isn't it? When are they conducting? T1 and T2 is conducting during this instant. So it is equal to zero because when they are conducting, it will act as short circuit and the voltage across it will be equal to zero, isn't it? And that is why you're getting a short circuit voltage of zero over here. Now at this instant, when the supply voltage is going negative, T1 and T2 are reversed past. As a result, it will start following whatever is the supply voltage waveform. Because during negative half cycle, whatever is supplied will be appearing across T1 and T2 because they're acting as open circuit, isn't it? As a result, you will be getting a waveform like this. And it continues to follow its direction of the supply voltage unless and until T1 and T2 is conducting again. So when does that happen? That happens when T1, T2 is triggered at firing angle alpha again and this takes place. So that is why we have a shape of the waveform like this. So that is why in the starting, it is considered to have a waveform starting like this. I hope this point is clear. Now let us look at the analysis part. We're going to derive the average output voltage waveform expression for average output voltage, just like the way we had done in the previous cases. So what is the average output voltage? If you carefully observe, you will be considering from alpha to pi because that is the instant or duration at which the output voltage exists. So V out average is equal to one by pi into alpha to pi according to this Vm sin omega t into d omega t. V out is equal to one by pi we can take Vm outside. Integration of sin omega t is minus cos omega t from alpha to pi. V out is equal to Vm by pi into one plus cos alpha. This is the average output voltage expression. One short observation is when we have a freewheeling diode with an RL load, the average output voltage expression is same as with an R load for a fully controlled rectifier, isn't it? We had derived the expression for R load as well in the previous cases. So this is a just an observation that you can make a note of because you're getting the same voltage expression when you're having a RL plus freewheeling diode. Now, what is the RMS value of output voltage? Again, we have the output voltage from alpha to pi. So from the fundamental definition, V out RMS is equal to square root of one by T, that is pi we are considering because every pi interval it is repeating, isn't it? That is why alpha to pi Vm square sine square omega T into D omega T. V out RMS is equal to square root of, we can take Vm square outside by pi alpha to pi 
sin square omega t can be written as 1 minus cos 2 omega t whole divided by 2 into d omega t. Substituting and simplifying this expression further, we have derived this in this previous cases, so I'm not again deriving this complete expression. We will be getting V out RMS is equal to Vm by square root of 2 pi into pi minus alpha plus sine 2 alpha by 2 whole power 1 by 2. This is the expression for RMS value of output voltage. Now what is the peak inverse voltage? And circuit turn off time peak inverse voltage is the maximum negative voltage that is appearing isn't it according to the fundamental definition if you see the maximum peak inverse voltage is basically vm so peak inverse voltage is given by vm and what is the circuit turn off time if you carefully observe this is the duration at which the thyristors is turned off circuit turn off time is basically the duration in which the thyristors are turned off so if we consider we have this instant isn't it that is pi by omega this is the circuit turn off time i hope this video gave you a clear understanding of the operation of a single phase fully controlled rectifier with rl load and free wheeling diode in case you have any questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below thanks for watching stay tuned thank you